Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Lakeside Christian Fellowship. It's a beautiful, crisp morning, so we are happy to have the fall coming in. Uh, I have some announcements this morning. Samaritan's Purse, this is the last week. If you uh, would bring in your uh, box for Samaritan's Purse, or you could have a week to fill one up and uh, take it and bring it back in. Um, I also have uh, that Lakeside Christian Fellowship is working with the Lago Vista School District to provide grocery shopping gift certificates to Lago Vista families that are in need for their Thanksgiving dinners. And if you would wish to sponsor one, we have the form, and we'll take your money gladly. And uh, are there any other announcements? If not, let's begin today. Thank you. And I hope you'll all join me in singing Jesus Calls Us. Join me and Lisa Weaver that we have singing with us today as well. Jesus Calls Us. Here we go. Rise if you're able. Jesus calls us for the tumult of our lives while restless seed. Day by day his sweet voice soundeth, saying, Christian, follow me. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden store, from each idol that would keep us saying christian love me more jesus calls us by thy mercies savior may we hear thy call give our hearts to thine obedience serve and love thee bless all morning everybody and welcome to our worship services this morning good to have you here uh, one praise report and this is personal uh, my son Eric is uh, celebrating his 52nd birthday tomorrow and how that kid got to be 52 years old I have no idea but anyway he's uh, we were celebrating with him uh, and his family last night. So I uh, want to wish him a, a happy birthday tomorrow. There's a whole host of people in our church and in the community around us that uh, are in need of prayers. Now, I'm not going to name them all, uh, but I'd like to bring you up to date uh, on some of those that we mentioned last week uh, and bring you up to date uh, for this week. But first of all, I'd like to, um, I, um, we owe a huge apology to Dick Sanders. Um, we inadvertently announced last week that the flowers were in memory of Wilma's mother. They were, in fact, placed there in honor of Dick's daughter, Sherry, uh, who passed away last year. And Dick, we apologize to you, and of course, we, we remember Sherry. Scott Weaver. Hi, Lisa. Had his third knee surgery uh, this past week. Lisa's here this morning gracing her with her beautiful voice. And she tells me that Scott's doing very good, although he's in intense pain. And so, Lord have mercy. I, I ran into Scott last week uh, before the surgery uh, down at the rehab center. And uh, uh, he was working on a bike, man, let me tell you. Oh, wow. He didn't show it. I tell you what, he was working that bike, and I was going like, my gosh, this guy's going to have surgery? <laughs> anyway, I understand that uh, Risa Burton uh, has broken her leg, or broken her hip. Let me, let me write that down. Broke her hip and have surgery uh, in the coming days. So keep uh, Risa in your prayers. Gene Andrews. I'm happy to say is back in Encompass Hospital. 
That's the rehab center. Um, I heard from uh, Warwick this week, and he tells us that all her vitals are back to normal, although she's still weak, and he says that it'll be a few days uh, for her strength to return to normal, and perhaps, uh, hopefully, to return home this week. And we pray that that's, uh, that will happen. He cautions that Williamson County uh, restrictions means that only family members uh, can come by to visit her. So if you were thinking about going by and, and seeing Jean uh, this week, um, please hold off. Uh, she might be home uh, pretty soon. Thanks for your prayers, he says, your cards, your good wishes and support during this rather anxious time. And so you just keep Jean and Warwick in your prayers. Ginger Halstead is rehabilitating at home, uh, continuing uh, with nurse and therapist visits. Uh, I understand that Dan Harding's uh, test went well. He's back home. Are there any others that uh, we have um, not mentioned or that has not come to our attention? Okay. Would you please bow your heads as we... as we lift up to God those um, whom he's placed on your hearts. And Father God, we, uh, we lift up those who are in need of your help and guidance. We continue to pray for our country. We pray for those in the hospitals around the world and the doctors and nurses and technicians who care for them. It's good news that we may be getting a vaccine that is so needed to help us get through this pandemic. And it comes just in time as it seems that this virus is spreading again as the weather turns colder. And Father God, as we move into this holiday season, may we heed the advice of the medical experts as we gather together as families by continuing to wear masks when we're out in public and with each other in social gatherings and keep our social distancing guidelines in place. And now, Father, as we close this prayer time together, let us as a congregation pray the prayer your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lies over and around the slides, Lord of all, to thee we raise this our joyful hymn of praise. For the beauty of each of the day and of the night 
Stars of light, Lord of all, to Thee we raise. This our hymn of praise. For the joy of human The sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild, for all gentle thoughts and mild, Lord of all to This our joyful hymn of praise. For each perfect gift of thine, to our race so freely given, gracious you. Flowers of earth and buds of heaven, flowers of earth and buds of heaven, Lord of all, to thee we raise. This our joyful hymn of praise. I must apologize, I forgot to mention that the beautiful flowers are donated by Jim Orr in memory of his what would have been his parents' 200th anniversary. I think that's awesome. Okay, today's scripture. God's kingdom is like ten young virgins who took oil lamps and went out to greet the bridegroom. Five were silly and five were smart. The silly virgins took lamps, but no extra oil. The smart virgins took jars of oil to feed their lamps. The bridegroom didn't show up when they expected him, and they all fell asleep. In the middle of the night, someone yelled out, He's here! The bridegroom's here! Go out and meet him! The ten virgins got up and got their lamps ready. The silly virgins said to the smart ones, Our lamps are going out. Lend us some of your oil. They answered, there might not be enough to go around, go buy your own. They did, but while they were out buying oil, the bridegroom arrived. When everyone who was there to greet him had gone into the wedding feast, the door was locked. Much later, the other virgins, the silly ones, showed up and knocked on the door saying, Master, we're here, let us in. He answered, Do I know you? I don't think I know you. So stay alert, you have no, no idea when he might arrive. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lisa. And of course, Bill. <laughs> we thank we thank Bill every week. I just you know. <laughs> it's good to have you here this morning. There's a um, a little book called Laughter in Appalachia. And it was written by a guy by the name of Fred Park from Berea, Kentucky. And I looked it up. That's the correct spelling of Berea. And it tells a story about a man named Quill. 
Now, Quill lived back in the woods where he hunted and fished all the time. Quill didn't pay any attention to the hunting seasons or the laws regarding hunting and fishing or anything. And he knew the woods better than the game warden. Now, I stop right here because this could be a description of my uncles who lived in Deep East, Texas, in Newton County, uh, Texas. Um, and also the fact that the game warden had been trying to catch quill for a long time. And the game warden in Newton County was always trying to get my uncles for hunting and fishing out of season. And there's many stories that I can share with you, which I won't at this time, about going hunting and with them. But the game warden figured, well, okay, today's the day. Now, I'm going to get this guy once and for all. And he knew that Quill would be up very early in the morning to go fishing. So the game warden sneaked down in the middle of the night and hid on top of Quill's house. So he figured he'd get Quill that way, and so he waited until morning. And so very early in the morning, just about the time that the sun was coming up, he heard Quill moving around in the house. So he thought, well, okay, I'm going to let him get up and get, to the, get, him, get ready and go out, and then I'll follow him down to where he's going, and then I'll hide until he catches this large um, um, bunch of fish, a mess of fish, we like to call it, and then he'd catch him. Well, Quill, when he first got up, he put on a, a pot of coffee. Game Warren's up on the roof, smells his coffee. And Quill then put a batch of oven, uh, biscuits in the oven. And the game warden was sitting up there, his stomach growling, trying to contain himself. And then suddenly, Quill walked out of the house and stood on the porch and hollered, come on down here and get some of this coffee and biscuits while they're hot. I know you're out there. And he went back in the house and shut the door. The game warden couldn't believe it. Oh, Lord. He, so he caught, climbed down off the roof, walked, in the, walked up on the porch, walked into the house, and exclaimed, how did you know I was up there? And Quill smiled, and he said, I didn't. I walk out there every morning and say the same thing, just in case you're there. <laughs> now, now, Quill may not have been a genius, but he knew enough to take precautions because he was ready. He was prepared. I think Quill would probably appreciate Jesus' story about the wise and the foolish virgin, uh, virgins. Uh, Gene Peterson's uh, translation of the paraphrase of the New Testament calls them silly virgins. They went out to a wedding party to await the arrival of the bridegroom. And Jesus said, well, some brought extra oil for their lamps and some did not. When the bridegroom was delayed and the oil gave out, those who did bring an extra uh, measure of supply of oil tried to buy some from those who had uh, brought extra oil for the night. No deal. They were forced to return home or to go out and buy some more oil. And while they were gone, the bridegroom came, and the wedding party went into the banquet hall, shut the doors, and locked them. And when the foolish girls returned, the silly ones... The doors were closed, and they couldn't get in. And that's when Jesus said to his disciples, Stay alert. You have no idea when he might arrive. 
The admonition here, the admonition is loud and clear here. Be prepared. The difference between winning and losing in life is often preparation. Every successful person that I know of knows that's true. To the one willing to prepare goes the victory. Give you a, a couple of examples. Lee Chu Kung, who placed second to Van Cliburn in the 1958 Tchaikovsky uh, piano competition, was imprisoned a year later during the Cultural Revolution in China. During the entire seven years that he was held, he was denied the use of a piano. Soon after his release, however, he was back on tour. And critics wrote in and responded in, in, in astonishment that his musicianship was even better than before. And one critic walked up to him and he, and he said, how did you do this? You had no chance to practice for seven years. And Kung said to the man, I did practice every day. I rehearsed every piece I had ever played in my mind. Every day, note by note. You see, Lou knew that he must stay ready. He was not going to be in prison uh, for the rest of his life. He knew he would get out of prison. He wanted to be prepared just in case on the day that he was able to get out of prison, and he got out. 1976, Indiana's university's basketball team went undefeated. Do you realize how hard that is? in any sport, especially basketball, to go undefeated throughout the season, they did it. And they ended up capturing the NCAA championship. Controvert, they were coached by a man by the name of Bobby Knight. Well, Bobby uh, was a controversial and colorful coach. Many of you uh, kind of got an idea when he was coaching at Texas Tech. He came from Indiana to Texas Tech to coach basketball. And shortly after this event you know, in Indiana, uh, Knight was interviewed by 60 Minutes. And one of the uh, correspondents asked him, why is it, Bobby, that your basketball teams at Indiana are always so successful? Is it the will to succeed? And Bobby said, well, the will to succeed is important, yes. But I'll tell you what's more important. It's the will to prepare. It's the will to go out there every day, training, building those muscles, and sharpening those skills. Another famous coach lived, believed the same thing. His name was Fielding Yost. He was known as Hurry Up Yost. Uh, he was a football coach at the University of Michigan. And a player once asked him, actually the captain of the team, once assured the coach that their team was sure to win this Sunday, that, that, that next day, that next Saturday, because the team had the will to win. Now, hurry up, told this young man, he said, hold on here. Don't fool yourself. The will to win is not worth a plug nickel unless you have the will to prepare. That's true. Whether we're talking about sports or education or science or business or any worthwhile endeavor in life, success goes to the person who has the willingness to prepare. Indeed, our attitude about preparation reveals a lot about our character. Charlie Brown, you know Charlie Brown, Peanuts fame? He once said that his life was mixed up because he missed all the rehearsals. <laughs> I think I miss all the a lot of rehearsals. And maybe Charlie Brown is on to something. Of course, some people confuse constant rehearsal with the real thing. Now, let me, give you, let me give you a case in point. Noted philosopher and theologian Henry Nelson Wheelman once told of his roommate in college. Now, listen to this guy. He had to have everything in readiness. He went out and he procured a large, comfortable chair. He got study slippers and a lounging jacket. He fastened a book rest to the arm of the chair to hold the book at the right angle before his eyes. He installed a special lamp and an eye shade. Pencils, paper, and revolving bookcase were right beside the chair. 
He'd come into the room after the evening meal, take off his coat, put on the jacket, take off his shoes, slip into the slippers, adjust the study lamp, put, it, put his book on the book rest, recline in the comfortable chair with his eye shade over his eyes, and when everything was perfectly adjusted, he promptly went to sleep. I've been that way before. Preparation didn't do him a lot of good, did it? Usually, though, our attitude about preparation reveals the kind of person we are. John Johnstone, in his book, Walls and Bridges, tells about a, a major league baseball, all-star baseball player. And he said that this guy proved to be um, completely unreliable. Um, Johnstone writes in his book, there was, a, yeah, there was a fellow who had been selected by the fans, because you know the all-stars are selected by the fans. Coveted honor. Yet this guy didn't bring himself to get ready for the big game. Here it was, the day of the game. Amazingly, he was wearing a ragtag outfit. It began when he forgot. Yes, he forgot to bring his uniform to the game. Still desiring to play, he went to work putting together a makeshift arrangement. He bought a shirt from a replica shop, wrote his number on the back with a felt-tip pen, borrowed socks and shoes from another player, and then went down to the local merchandise shop and purchased a cap. Now, what a sight this person would have been. You see, that person, that ball player, should have read Jesus' parable about the foolish virgins or the one about showing up at a banquet in the wrong outfit. You remember that parable? The willingness and fa uh, to failure to prepare says a lot about a person's character. Contrast that, his haphazard approach, to the life of the Apollo astronauts. On one moon ex expedition, Apollo Captain Conrad commented, it's just like old home week. I feel like I've been there many times. After all, we've been rehearsing for this moment for the past four years. Contrast that with the attitude of a man like uh, uh, Senator Sam Irwin. Senator Sam, <laughs> what a character. Olin Robinson, former Peace Corps and, uh, State Department official in the Johnson administration. Happened to be with Senator Sam on the night before the Watergate hearings began. And Robinson said, Senator, we all look for a great deal from you tomorrow. It must be a tremendous weight on your shoulders going into this committee meeting and this hearing. Senator Sam looked at him and he said, Son, all my life I've been preparing for this moment. I am ready. You see, preparation and character go hand in hand. And there's one more thing that needs to be said before I close. It's amazing to me that there are so many people who are prepared for life, yet fail to prepare for eternity. They get their degrees in school. They position themselves with the right jobs. They set goals 10 years in advance. They know where they want to retire. Each year, they sock away the limit in their IRAs and their 401ks. But sadly, they totally disregard the most important reality of their relationship with God until it's too late and they find themselves totally unprepared. That said, I'll close with this. There's an old legend about a man who had a rather inept servant. The master often got exasperated with his servant. One day, in a fit of frustration, he said to the servant just before letting him go, you've got to be the stupidest man I have ever met in my entire life. Look, I want you to take this staff with you and carry it with you. And if you ever meet a man stupider than you are, give them the staff. So the servant carried the staff. Often out in the marketplace, he'd meet some pretty uh, inept people. But he was never sure 
that they were worse off than he was. Years passed with a servant carrying his staff. Then one day he came back to the castle and was ushered into the bedroom of his master, his former master. His master was quite sick. In the course of their conversation, the master said, I'm going on a long journey. The servant said, when do you plan to be back? The master said, this is a journey from which I will never return. And the servant said, sir, of course you made all the necessary pre preparations, right? The master said, no, I've not. The servant said, but did you have time to make, the res make uh, preparations for going on this journey? The master said, yeah, I guess I've had my life to make them. But I've been busy about other things. Servant said, Master, you're going on a journey from which you never return and for which you could have prepared for it and you just didn't? And the master said, Well, I guess you're right. And the servant took the staff. He carried so long and he said, Master, take this with you. At last I've met a man more stupid than me. You see, victory belongs to those who are prepared. Preparation is an essential characteristic of character. The most important preparation that we can make is for eternity. You see, we need to open our eyes to understand that where we end up in eternity depends on our utmost preparation for that event. Would you please stand as you're able. As we sing together the closing hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See. Open my eyes that I may see Glimpses of truth thou hast for me Place in my hands the wonderful key That shall unclasp and set me free Silently now I wait for thee Ready my guard thy will to see Open my eyes, illumine me Spirit Open my mouth and let me hear Gladly the warm truth everywhere Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready my God thy will to see Open my heart, illumine me, Spirit divine. You know, I forgot to thank Cindy when I was thanking Lisa and Bill, because without you, um, there, was, there, there would be, in my opinion, um, no music. Okay. Please don't be like the silly virgins. <laughs> be prepared. Be alert. Because you know something? You have no idea when he'll return. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Jesus is Lord of all. 